Good morning. This lesson is for Friday, April 17th. So yesterday you took a test, took a test over price. Hopefully it went well for you. So having had assignments prior to the test with questions and all that, we're going to shorten up today's lesson. We're going to talk brief, briefly about the different types of banks that you could go to and, and we're going to let it stop there. So, um, if you have questions related to the test, I'll get stuff posted. I'll start recording stuff today because the de the deadline was nine o'clock last night. So by the end of the weekend, things will, all your grades will be in the progress book for the whole entire week. So if you have questions, contact me. If not, let's get started here. So I'm going to share my screen with you. and it should be up and running. So what we know is that banks are financial institutions that make loans and they take in deposits. Well, we have all kinds of banks in town. We have Medina County Credit Union. We have Huntington. We have Fifth Third, PNC, Chase, Key Bank. We have all types of banks. Well, banks fall into two really general categories. Almost all the banks we have in town are what we call commercial banks. They're banks that were originally designed to focus on the on a business rather than in the, rather than the individual. Um, I bank at a commercial bank, Huntington. Okay, so I could do a, a person could bank at a commercial bank. Commercial banks, when they were first set up, their purpose was to focus more on businesses than individual banking. All commercial banks, here's what you need to know, and it's not going to appear. You need to know that all commercial banks are FDIC insured. All commercial banks have to follow the rules of the Federal Reserve System. All commercial banks are governed, they're examined, they're ruled over by the Federal Reserve System, which is actually a really good thing if you bank at one of these commercial banks. They, they, the government oversees them, okay? But prior to the government deregulating things, the, prior to the government lifting restrictions and regulations, we had different types of banks, different categories of banks. And now that we're deregulated, uh, you could do, Huntington for me is like Walmart. I could get all my banking needs and everything done there. But you know, sometimes there's some better options out there, but here's what we're going to do. I, we're, you need to know that a commercial bank are the big banks. Okay. And then there's something called a thrift bank. These banks, when they were originally created, were designed for us individuals. They did everything that the commercial bank did, but they did them for people. If that makes sense. See, before they deregulated banks, I had no reason to ever go to a commercial bank. I couldn't get everything done there. I could have a savings account, you know, and they deregulated them when I was a little kid. I could have a savings account at a commercial bank. That, that was about it. Okay. They didn't focus on individual loans and stuff like that. But thrift banks were strictly designed with us in mind the normal person, so to speak. So we're going to take a look, look at uh, the different types of thrift banks that we have. We have two thrift banks in Wadsworth and they're both credit unions. We have GenFed and we have a Dinah County Credit Union. And this is what makes a credit union somewhat unique is that there's membership requirements. Um, Huntington has no membership requirements whatsoever. There are membership requirements to go to a credit union. Now, I'm not that familiar with GenFed. I don't bank there and I would have to, it's in a folder at school, but I know what the requirements are from Dinah County Credit Union because I'm, I bank there. So I'm a member of Medina County Credit Union. And in order to bank at Medina County Credit Union, you have to do one of four things or meet one of four categories. You have to live in Medina County, which I do. You have to go to school in Medina County, which obviously I don't anymore. You have to work in Medina County, which I do. You have to be a member of a church in Medina County, which I am. 
So I meet three of the four. I only have to meet one. I live in, I live in Wadsworth, so I'm good. I could bank there. Why would you bank at a credit union? I think because they're, they're awesome. They're limited in scope and what they can do, but I think they're awesome. They, they are, they, they give some of the best car loans out there, credit cards. Um, they could service you on small manners. They're, I don't believe Medina County Credit Union is going to give you a multi-million dollar loan, stuff like that, but they give you a loan for a car. They can take care of all your banking needs. You could open up a checking account there, a savings account. They're, they're a little more interest friendly. In other words, they give you a little bit more money, but they're limited in scope. So, but I, they're, they're wonderful, absolutely wonderful places to bank. There's another bank, which we no longer have. It, it is uh, savings and loans. Savings and loans, before banks were deregulated, if you wanted to get personal loans, you had to go to what was called an s and Okay. We had a Wadsworth savings and loan back in the day, and it was next to that little bank that's right next to Save-A-Lot. That was a Wadsworth savings and loan. And what they did is they made home loans. They, they did all the loans for you. They, they did the personal loans and, and stuff like that. So if you needed to go uh, get a loan for a house, for a car, you went to a savings and loan. So kind of back in the day, my, my grandparents and my parents owned businesses in town. And I know they both business-wise, they banked at Huntington because it was where it was at. I know my parents then did their personal banking um, when, when they built their home, they, they got their loan from Wazer Savings and Loan. And then they did their own personal banking at a credit union in town. And there's another type of thrift bank and that's called a savings bank, which did everything Huntington did or a commercial bank did, but on a smaller scale, you could get a personal checking account. You could do stuff like that. Guys, you, you don't really need to know great detail about the different types of thrifts savings and loans are almost extinct i don't know where there's very i don't know where one is locally uh a savings bank my loan for my home is through um home savings bank which is in youngstown and then i we do have a credit union in town here's what here's the biggest difference between a commercial bank and a thrift bank biggest difference is thrift banks have to get their own insurance they are not FDIC insured. They are insured, so your money's safe, but it's not FDIC insurance. Thrift banks have the choice to follow the Fed, which we'll talk about next, next chapter. They have the choice to follow the Fed or they're on their own. Commercial banks must follow the Fed, so they are regulated and governed by the Federal Reserve System. So these are different types of banks. I'm a big fan of credit unions. With online banking anymore, I know I don't see the need for you to have to run around and look to change banks and stuff like that. When you go to college, that that used to be a big thing. Now it's probably not so much of a big deal anymore because you could even deposit everything through your phone. I know that's how my son does things. So, but anyways, these are the <clears throat> excuse me the two major types of banks. So we're almost done. I'm going to show you a little bit more. So, how do banks make money? Well, it's pretty simple. They make money by giving out loans. Now, the, the interesting thing is, <coughs> is that they also charge us or that they also pay us to save our money with them. Okay. They, they pay you interest if you in your savings account. But how do banks make money? They make loans. So my home mortgage is for X amount of dollars. And my rate is 4.3%. If my interest rate at Huntington on my savings account is less than 1%. So if I would happen to get my home loan from, from um, uh, Huntington, then you can see how they're going to make. They just take your money, they loan to somebody else, charge them more, and you get a little bit back. Okay, that's how they make money. It's pretty simple. Banks operate under something called fractional banking. I have a great picture of it at, in the classroom. It's a picture of a great big piece of pizza. 
and then there's a little sliver that they keep for themselves and the rest of the pizza pie is loaned out and given out to different individuals. Okay, fractional banking is where the bank only keeps a portion of your deposit, then it lends out the rest of your money. So that one, that this is why I said it's important for you to bank. You, you need the bank so they have more money to loan out. The more money they have to loan out, to loan out their supply curve shifts to the right, which means that they can reduce interest rates because they have a lot more money to loan out. So, but there's one thing they're counting on and that's us paying off our loans and all that other stuff. They're not, they don't want anybody to run and, and close out their accounts because your money's out there, et cetera. And you'll get your money. Don't worry, you'll get your money, but banks op operate under what's called a fractional banking system. So the fraction, fractional banking helps the Federal Reserve System keep track of the flow of money and the money supply. So we're almost done. I got two clicks for you. I'm going to, we're going to talk about the difference between the flow of money and the stock of money. And then take out a $1 bill here. The stock of money is how many physical $1 bills exist. How many physical pieces exist? Remember, money must be limited in supply. There are more $1 bills than there are $5 bills. More fives and tens, tens and twenties, twenties and fifties, fifties, then up $100 bills. We get that. This is a stock of money. If you ever looked on a piece of money, and I, I don't, I know you probably can't see it, it has a little um, serial number right here. But in this little um, Federal Reserve seal, it has I9. There are 12 different Federal Reserve districts. When this bill was first, it's a, called a note. When this note was first created, it was sent to Federal Reserve District I, which is Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was sent there. And then from there, it's made its way to Wadsworth, Ohio, here in my desk. So the stock of money is how many physical pieces exist. So they keep track of it. And if I would show you a video on money, they shred money. So as they shred a dollar, they'll release a dollar. The flow of money is the speed or rate at which we spend it. Now, before I say this, I'm not recommending that anybody drive fast. But we know the dangers of driving fast and we know the dangers of driving too slow. The flow of money is the speed it moves through our system. If it goes through our system too fast, too quickly, it's dangerous. Prices could skyrocket. We could hit periods of inflation. We're just spending money. There's people that go out and they love to, uh, maybe you're one of them, you, you want to go shopping. You've had a bad day, you go out shopping. I'm not saying you can't do that. What I'm saying is every Friday can't be a Black Friday. We can't have sales every weekend. We have to regulate the flow of money. Speed limit 70 miles an hour on the highway. On a nice sunny day, pavement's dry. Maybe you're going 75 or so. And it's sometimes it's kind of fun to drive fast. Wouldn't, I don't recommend it. But you don't drive fast all the time because it becomes too dangerous. Either one, you're going to get a ticket. Or worse yet, you're going to get an accident. Okay, so we have different speed limits. Sometimes a very slow driver creates the same dangers. So when we get this stimulus check that the government wants to send everybody, they really kind of want you to spend it to pay some bills, get some money out there flowing. Don't hold, they don't want you to hold on to it. That's not stimulating the economy. That's stimulating your, your bank account or worse yet, your desk. Okay. The too slow of a flow, then the economy comes to a screeching halt, which is kind of what's happening right now is people are not working. They're filing for unemployment. So we got this really slow flow 
And then as we don't go and we don't spend on this side of the circular flow, that business has to close down. I was, I was reading some business was having a sale and basically taking whatever you would offer them that they have to shut their doors. They can't say it's been a month and they can't, they can't stay open any longer. So the stock of money is how many physical pieces and the flows, the rate at which it moves through the system. Tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit, um, or I should say Monday, actually, we're going to talk more about the flow of money and how they regulate it, how they track it. And then that's really what the Fed does is they monitor, they're like the, the police for, for the flow of money in our country. They create policies and rules to regulate that flow. They're going to either encourage you to spend, encourage you to drive fast, or go discourage you and have you slow down. Okay, they're going to do one of the same. I have a feeling when we finally get out there and we're back the, back in the shopping and that, they're going to want us to spend. So they're, they're going to do some things to get us to spend money for a little bit. Then they're going to try to gradually slow us down. But those are the types of banks, commercial banks and thrifts, a little bit. They make their money by loaning it out. And the only way they can loan it out is operating under a fractional system. And then fractional system leads to the Fed keeping track of the money. And then we just needed to identify the difference between the flow of money and the stock of money. So I'll only give you a couple questions to go along with this assignment. Hopefully things are well. I hope you have a great weekend. And we will see you on Monday. You can check uh, for your grades over the weekend, okay? Take care. Bye.